just blasted my ear. <coughs> just... Good Wait, why morning, so much... good afternoon, good evening, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Manero with J-Man Speaks coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters in uh, New York. In New York. Just New York. New York works. <laughs> so that's uh, Jeremiah's J-Man Manero, and I'm yes. Jeffrey Scott Stanton. He's upstate New York. I'm in the city. I'm everywhere. I'm in, New York, I'm so. in your heart. <laughs> no. See, are, are we really going to start it this early? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> why not? I, I got to adjust. So let me just make our heads the same size because we know yours is much bigger <laughs> than mine. Um, let's see here. <laughs> uh, what are we talking about today, Jeffrey? See, you know, this, Jeffrey? This, this is how I totally mess. This is how I totally mess with J-Man. <laughs> oh, you zoomed in. That's You did do that last week. <laughs> I'm like, what in the hell? There's no way that... <laughs> Okay, I understand now. So could you could you fix me because I'm floating in the air? Yeah, I got you now. There you go. Is that about, that's <clears> about right? So, everybody, welcome to much to say about nothing or a lot to say about everything with J Man and Jeffrey. J Man and Jeffrey. All right, so folks, listen. First, we want to start out by putting any questions that you have in the comments below. We will read them. We will reply. Please try to put as much information as possible so we don't have to ask clarifying questions to the question that you asked. Uh, but to, today, mm -hmm. I think our jump off spot was going to be uh, google.com slash my business and some of the business resources that every single real estate person on the planet needs to do to get verified. Why are this you bouncing your camera? This is me excited. <laughs> 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 I'm not, my laptop was was bouncing. Oh, uh, that's funny. So we're doing Google My Business. <clears throat> so, Jamie, let's talk to us. What is Google My Business or Google Your Business? Well, a Google Business page. Quite often when trying to come up with ideas, I Google things, right? And today I was like, I Google top searches for business owners on Google. The first was, mm -hmm. how do I get verified with Google? dot com slash my business then it was like um how do i enhance my listing and get reviews then it was how do i start a facebook business page do i need a business page etc so let's start with the getting verified if you've never ever heard of google.com my slash my business we're glad you're here uh, basically it's just verifying that you exist with the google because if you don't you don't <clears throat> so jamie i have a question about that because we've had agents that have gone to set up their Google My Business account. And it uh, when they put in the address, it actually asks for verification. So I know a lot of times Google will send you a card yep. and that it has like a code or something on it and you have to go back to Google. But we had the, we've had the scenario where it's actually asked people for copies of like utility bills. Have you ever seen that before? Um, I have it, it, especially when there's a, more than like a, a high number of people like in your um, yeah, on Madison be. Ave there, you have what you said, 500 agents or something crazy. But that's just on one of the floors. So we probably on, have a yeah, thousand. Yeah, on one of the floors. So it's like, hold on. If if you're trying to that many people are trying to verify, then they'll they'll ask for additional verification. But uh, you can and should verify, even if you're like, okay, my office is verified. It should be like J Man Realty at this address, so that when somebody does a Google search, they can find you. They can see your reviews. They can see if you're open. They should see. You should silence your cell phone before you go live on the internet and no, with a potential podcast. This is a great opportunity to talk about if things happen during your broadcast, what should you do? And the answer is... <laughs> you should silence your cell phone is what you should do. But there's programs anyway. that, uh, like Messenger, even when it's silenced on my phone, my, it's open on my desktop, um, as well as Google Voice. But that was your phone. And... That, that, was, that was your phone. That was Allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, I can't. <laughs> okay, so why why would I want to have a Google My Business? Well. A Google business page. Yeah, because in the today's modern consumer, right, what do we do with everything? Everything, everything. We'll Google search it and we'll look it up. Like, mm -hmm. okay, who is this Jeffrey Scott Stan character? I'm going to enter it into Google. Mm -hmm. And if Google comes up with no result, quite literally, you do not exist. I don't care if you have the most market share, you've been in the business the longest, because I'll get that from agents sometimes. They're like, I've been in the business 30 years. What do I need to do this for? Well, that new person who's never met you 
they are going to do a Google search. And if you do not exist, then they're not going to do business with you, regardless of your track record and history. So and this is another thing where, and, and I'll bring the psychology behind this, is <clears throat> there's proven scientifically, scientifically proven ways to persuade people. And one of them actually is social proof. So people are going to take more from a third party saying that Jay Man's the greatest, Jeffrey Stanton's the greatest, than they're ever going to take me even showing them proof that I'm greatest. So that's when it comes down to Google My Business is, now I'm spotlighted, with Google My Business is, like, that's what all your reviews should be because that is the social proof, which, which well, I'm, I'm on the screen all by myself. I don't want to be on the screen myself. So... I think, you know, we all love sending people to Zillow and Realtor.com and Trulia and those things. And you, 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 what are you doing? And all those things. But Google is always going to put out. What? Stay Google's focused, bro. Gonna... I thought my ADHD was bad. I'm... You're like, oh, uh, oh, uh, why? Stay focused. Google is always going to show their stuff first when people Google right. you. And that's the whole thing. No one ever says, oh, I'm going to enter other search. I'm going to bing you. I'm going to, <laughs> sounds so weird. I'm, I'm going to, you, baby. do you remember Ask Jeeves? Do you remember Ask Jeeves? I do remember Ask Jeeves. That was like one of the first I'm gonna search ask engines, Jeeves, wasn't you. It? Ask Jeeves. Yeah. 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 I was bought out by Yahoo, I believe. But to me, having that business page there, first of all, shows you're legitimate because it's a business page. Right. And then, especially if you get people to do reviews there for you, that's showing their social proof. Because, you know, it used to be, it used to be this, somebody would do business with you. And if you did a great job, they would tell one or two people. If you did a crappy job, they would tend, they would tell 10 or 12. That's how it used to be. But now right. you have like zero moment of truth. We used that first moment of truth. Zima. Now we have zero moment of truth. Yep. Yeah. Zima, which is them searching you before they even meet you. And there's the thing, if you provide crappy service, they're going on Google, they're going on realtor.com and they're feeling this is the thing. You're never getting those removed. Right. So the other stance is I had an agent tell me, it wasn't even one of our agents, is why would I why would I want to be on Google if I get a bad review, I can't remove it. And I'm like, shouldn't the conversation we're right. having is how do I make sure I don't get bad reviews? Right, right. Like shouldn't Or if <laughs> you get one bad review, then let's get ten or twenty positive ones to kind of drown out the because we all know that there's one person that that's what they like to do on a daily basis, right? Misery loves company. Yep. They're really good at just giving bad reviews and complaining about stuff. Um, but to touch on what you said about social proof and so many people who are like, you know, social media influencers or they have a great following there and they're like, well, I got it all on my Facebook. Well, you don't own that at all. Mm -hmm. You may think you do, they but at any given tomorrow. moment, they could go like this. You're locked out, bro. You're done. Like I know I've, I, I've been, I've been, I've been Facebook banned four times. Well, you should. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Originally, it was more like when Facebook first started big because I wanted to. I was playing around with how many invites and stuff you can send out to people. Yeah. So for me, it was before I had built my Facebook following. I wanted to see, like, where are the limits. What can I, what can I do? But if I would have built up a following there, and then all of a sudden they said, "Oh, you sent out one more request than you should have." Therefore, we're suspending you for 30 days or whatever it happens to be. It's a problem. Yeah, I uh, and this. Hold on. Let me tell my story and then you tell. No, I'm, it goes please. tit for tat. That's how it works. Um, <laughs> let me just quick. I was at a conference and I was talking about social media and I had so much traffic go to my page. So much traffic to go to my page in in a and in like a six hour period that it was just as the pandemic was starting. Yeah. It was like one of my last conferences, and they were just using robots and algorithms to determine when something was wrong. Mm -hmm. They said, "Oh, it, we deemed there was too much tra too much traffic going to your site. We thought it it might be bot related, like you were getting artificial traffic going to your site. So we unpublished it. They didn't even put me in Facebook jail. They unpublished." My, my page, which has tens of thousands of followers, at a time Show when a lot of people were going there, I was like at the airport going, <gasps> <gasps> and I can I appealed it, but that still took four days. Four days where I didn't exist if somebody did a search. Okay, so, go ahead. <clears throat> so let's, let's talk about that. So 
if we're talking about social proof and getting reviews, testimonials, and those types of things, if we're talking about using the a platform for it, where to me, I'd much rather send past clients to my Google reviews than send them to any of the aggregators. Like to me, why am I going to send them? I'm going to use Zillow for an example. Why am I going to send them right. to give me a Zillow review? Because like that's where they're going to go to search for other properties and see other people. I mean, primary, if I can ask them to, hey, do my Google, then do Zillow, then do – like if I can ask them to do all three, I think that's great. But to me, the primary – once I had enough views, once I had enough reviews on, say, again, just Zillow as an example, then I would absolutely Google. Yeah, I mean, What's it's, your it's going to be around. What are what are some good, let's give them some advice on how to get reviews. So I think that's where a lot of people struggle. They think, they think that people are going to mm -hmm. love them so much. They're going to be like, oh my God, gonna, Jeffrey, it, it was so great working with you. Can I please recommend you somewhere? Where do I go? And that's so got to ask. To me, it starts out with planting the seed initially. So, Jeremiah, I want you to be so happy, so outrageously happy with the help and service I provide you that at the end of the transaction, I'm going to ask you if you can give me a review. And it'll probably be on, on either Google, Zillow, or one of the other aggregators, wherever it happens to be. So, that's really my goal. My goal is that you give me a five star review and you tell everybody. Jeff's the best real estate agent. Jeff's the best whatever in the whole entire world. So I'm going to preference it at the start. Like literally, that's part of the, the listing presentation is my goal is to for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that not only are you going to tell your friends about it, when I ask you at the end if you'll write a review for me, that you'll actually write a rating review. So since I'm bringing it up front, when I ask them later on, they're okay with it. And they're right. like, okay, cool. Like this – this guy actually wants me to be happy that I'm going to review him. So there's two things you're doing psychologically there. You're planting a seed for the future and you're letting them know this is my goal. My goal isn't only to get your household. My goal is to to have you tell your friends about me. Write the Google review. And the benefit to that also is then when you ask them even for referrals, remember, you told them that was your goal in the beginning. Right. Oh, that's it? You're done? <laughs> I was doing the awkward pause you did to me last week. Oh. No, but think about it. Think about it this way: if if you just if you went to a restaurant and the restaurant said, "Yeah, ready, Mr. Stanton, great, you know, great to see you, whatever, uh, your reservations here, and you just want to know, we want everything to be so perfect that when you leave, you're going to give us a Yelp review. So if anything is not perfect or to your liking, please let us know so we can correct it immediately. I'd be like, thank you, because they're giving you permission. What was that? Was that crickets? <laughs> they're giving you you're you're giving them permission or they're giving you permission to tell us let us know if we messed up and I, and i think this goes to a bigger conversation i think a lot of real estate agents are afraid to even bring that up because think about if you went jay man think about someone's if you're you're a real estate agent a realtor said to you is hey you know what listen my goal is to have you so outrageously happy with help provide you that you'll give me reviews and if at any time i don't meet your expectations please let me know immediately so i can correct it I mean, to me, the, that's at, powerful. At, at the end of the transaction, I want them to go, Awesome! Oh, yeah, Absolutely. that's right. Even with the sound effect and all, that was perfectly cute. I have a great producer today, um, Antonio Jacob Monero, his last day before school. He's on the ones and twos for me today. Hit him with the DJ <laughs> air horn. There we go! I hate the air horn. Oh, I, it's, Since it's AJ, we'll let it pass. Yeah. <laughs> but see what I'm saying? It's... If you set it up, then it's unexpected. Or this is how most real estate agents do it, as you know. The deal closes. They say, hey, it was great helping you sell the house. Could you click here, here, and here, and here, and write me a review? Like, that's what they do. Right. And to me, it needs to be more than that. It actually should be a phone call or a conversation you have, not at the closing, not the day after closing, a week or two. It gives you a reason to reach back out to people and say, hey, you know, Mr. Smith, when we originally sat down, I said, I want you to be so outrageously happy that, that you would tell your friends about me. Did I, did I fulfill that? Like, oh, no, Jeff, you know, you were great. Perfect. So I was wondering, or I'm curious, these are, write this down. I'm curious, would you feel comfortable? So it's, I'm curious, would you feel comfortable writing a review online for me? And if they say, oh, Jeff, absolutely. This is your follow-up question. 
what would you say? And you let them say it. Say, okay, perfect. Is it okay if I write that up for you and I'll just email it over to you? Because you have to be careful what they write, especially if you discounted something for them. I'm very careful when I say that. If you discounted something for them, you don't want them going, hey, Jeff's the greatest person in the world. He charged me less than he charges everybody else. Because then what's going to happen? You get more charged lessers. Yes. I'm very, I'm very uh, complying today with the laws <laughs> <laughs> well it's it you know um and, and we talk about this too i understand like in the beginning when you're getting started you have to take everybody richard noggin and everybody else who you know another name for richard another name for noggin those clients and everybody else but once you're in it long enough and you have a decent book of business then you can be more selective and work with people that you like so then you get referred to people who are just like the people that you like <clears throat> ah I'm actually going to ask you to, to change a word there linguistically. I I probably stopped no. 15 years ago asking for a referral. I'm a savage. What did you say now? Yeah. <laughs> so I probably stopped like 15 years ago asking for referrals. Don't like that word. Because think about it is, is the well, way your mind asking. works. I was you just can't... talking about it like, you know, with you. I know. Okay, go I ahead. Know. So this one, we're going to help everybody out. So your mind, unless you're a real estate agent, can't make a picture of what a referral is. It, it just doesn't. There's a, a, they don't know why there's a train going by. Your mind can't make a picture. And you can't, Einstein said it, you can't do anything unless you imagine doing it first. So if you ask someone who's not a real estate agent, what's a referral? They're like, well, what do you mean? Because if you call your friend and ask them for a good restaurant, you say, you don't say, can I have a referral to a restaurant? But you, you don't use, you don't use those words right. in common language. So this is the word you should change. You want an introduction. So, Jamie, I want you so outrageously happy to help I provide you that you're going to introduce me to your friends and family and tell them I'm the greatest real estate agent in the world. So that's what you want is you want an introduction because, Jeremiah, if I ask you, tell me what an introduction is. What is that? I introduce you to somebody. Yeah, it's it's. I'm going to take you and I'm going to introduce you to my friend Bob. Right. That's what you want. A referral is call Jeff. An introduction is Steve, Quality me, J-Man, he's my real estate yeah. agent. He's the great, exactly. So that's the reason why. And it comes back to, from the very beginning, setting the stage for the Google reviews, for any of the reviews, have that conversation up front, and then have that follow-up conversation afterwards. Well, here's um, why I was laughing. Because I heard, like, a siren in the background. <laughs> and then I looked over at AJ because I thought he was playing a siren sound effect he's like it wasn't me it wasn't me and then uh, that uh, was you i'm in new york city yeah madison avenue there's some fire engines ambulances go by some sirens going by that's funny like, so who's not anybody have a question for us on the topic or not on the topic there's much to say about nothing and much to say about everything much to say about nothing well uh i'll continue on in the with the google suite of products uh they used to be called g suite but now it's called workspace I don't want to talk about that. Oh, you don't. Okay. Well, um, let me talk about the importance of branding. Well, can we, can we actually stay on the review topic for a couple minutes? We have 23. <laughs> well, I think it's important. What do you think about real estate agents getting Yelp reviews? I, I think it's better than getting, you know, something that rhymes with pillow. Right. Well, <laughs> well, no, it's it's not as common for real estate people right now. But just like anything, it's like if you start doing something before the trend is popular, then you're mm -hmm. already creating that. Um, that what's the word I'm looking for? You're establishing yourself within that platform, and it's well, important because the way Yelp works is not just you ask for reviews, but you also review other other businesses. So. Mm -hmm. You have more Yelp uh, cred. I forget what they call it, but if somebody's a big Yelper, you'll get invites. Mm -hmm. all, you'll get invites to grand openings of hot restaurants, and and they want you to come because they want your review because they understand that it it holds more yeah. more clout online. And, and to me, I think I think that's untapped. If we're doing that, someone's going to Google search you, and they're going to find that type of stuff. To me, Yelp is a very powerful website. 
And if your name is on there with reviews and reviews and reviews that you're reviewing things and people are reviewing you, it's right. going to give you more Google weight. Right. Because, you know, if somebody goes on to Yelp and does one bad review of a restaurant that they went to, that's not going to hold as much um, credibility as I've been to 100 restaurants and reviewed them mm -hmm. all. And now I give a negative review. They're going to hold my mine way up here compared to that one person or that one person that gives negative reviews all the time. Okay. Right. And, and that's and the thing I, I get. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say um, what you'll notice in anything that you when you're looking at the reviews and recommendations is that everybody gets a negative review at some point in the the lifeline of their business. But it's how you respond and, to that review. And just, so this is how I should respond. This person's a liar. They, you know, was supposed to sell their house and change their mind. Right. There was mold and termites. That's how I should respond, right? Yeah, liar, like, liar, pants like, on fire. Like, hey, this frigging guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's crazy. Right? Yeah. That, that's how I should respond? No. So how should I respond? With facts, figures, you know, and the truth. And this is the thing. I think you respond with the truth and you have to take the conversation offline. You know, hey, Steve, sorry, sorry you see the poor experience. I would love to see what I can do about it. Please email me at whatever. I think the restaurants that handle it that way oh, compared yeah. to the restaurant or hotel or whatever that this person's out of their mind. It was staying at a different place. They weren't staying here. I think that you lose credibility there. Yeah, like, you know, I've seen we were going to stay at a resort somewhere. I think it was Jamaica or something. And then this person was like, this place was awful. It was under construction. They moved our room three times and then like five minutes after the post, which tells me they're on top of things. Mm -hmm. The person replied like, we're sorry you had a negative experience. We were going under, uh, you know, undergoing a massive renovation at that time. We'd be happy to have you come back and, and stay at our resort now for free. Please, you know, mm -hmm. feel free to contact us. Here's our contact information and we'll reach out to you on, you know, offline. And then it's like, wow, not only did they address what yep. happened, but then they're also going to make amends above and beyond. Like, we ended up staying there just because of that that kind of a response. Because you know they have good customer service, right? Because you know good customer service isn't all. And this is a, this is a lot even for real estate agents. Good customer service isn't. It is providing customer service during the transaction to make sure it goes smoothly. But what rockstar customer service is if something goes wrong, providing even better customer service because something something can always, always go, wrong. go wrong. We're in an industry that like there there's. So many things that are outside our control, the home inspector, the appraiser, the mortgage company, whatever it happens to be, that literally can make a deal, make or break a deal. And that a lot of times it's, you know, us, it, it's falling apart. You know, in New York City, the co-op board declined me and they leave, you know, a, a bad review for, for the real estate agent because the co-op board declined. Oh, I got declined. This is ridiculous. You should never do business with Bob. And you're like, wait a second. Hi, I'm sorry. That was actually the co-op board. The real estate agents don't approve or decline. Like, mm -hmm. hey, I would love to continue helping you. There's a way of doing it which shows, right. I think it's emotional intelligence is, is what right. it is. That's it. EI. Mm -hmm. E-I-E-I-O. Not AI. E-I-E-I-O. Well, that's I mean, J-Man's bot, sir. But let's yeah. talk about it. Who's Bob and what did he ever do to you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Bob. <laughs> that, that Bob. Good thing. There was a bully in school. His name is Bob. And now from now on, I use Now that's it. Bully. Look at you're drinking off my shoulder. Uh, uh. All right. So reviews and recommendations. We've also found that when we do uh, client appreciation events is also a great time. Finally, guys, we got Jeff off. Oh, he's back. Never mind. <laughs> client you appreciation know, parties. You lean back. Like, you lean, are you leaning lean back? back. I was starting to sing. You're not. No, this chair doesn't lean back. This this is how far I can lean back in this chair. Okay. I don't know. It feels like you're... But okay. Can they, say what you were saying. Yeah, client appreciation parties. Uh, we have found, you know, people feel like they want to reciprocate. Hey, that's that's your side. Um, you know, the law of reciprocation where we're doing good things. We're inviting them to a client appreciation party. You know, and, and you're trained almost your whole life if you were brought up right. Like, I'm going to a, a gathering. I should bring something. Or it's like, don't bring anything. Don't worry. Come. And so when they get there, they feel like, ah, 
uh, is there, are you mm-hmm. sure there's not anything I can do? Well, actually, we have these computers set up over here if you'd like to give us a, a review or recommendation. Scan We're, the we, QR code. That's it. Beep, 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 beep. Good to go. GTG. And, th- and that's really the best. I think, I think that's phenomenal to do that. But AJ, <laughs> hold on. Let me, sometimes I go like this. Um, do you think you could review us? Are you saying it's AJ? Crickets? And then we hear crickets. No, he was just dying to use the cricket sound effect. <clears throat> well, this is the thing. Some people just... Listen, there's some people who talk about reviews. And to me, reviews... The same person who reviews you is the same person who's going to refer you business to. That, that's just how it is. It's the same type of personality. And there's around 15% of the population that will not introduce you to other people, will not send out referrals, will not review you, because they just don't. Th- that's just it. So you have to assume right off the bat, 15% of the people will not do it. Around 30% of the people will endorse, let's call it just an endorsement, will endorse you because if you've treated them right, they will endorse you because that's their personality. So now you have, that's 45, so 15% will not, about 30 to 35% will, so that's 50%. The other 50% will if you ask them in an intelligent manner. Uh, and if was, you look at the amount of people... God, I'm sorry, Jamie. I was just going to say, I think 83% of statistics are made up on the spot. We actually did... When, when I had my, my own company, we actually did a study on this. And we actually did... We, we hired an outside company to do telemarketing to ask... If you went to a pizzeria, if you went to a restaurant, what's your favorite restaurant? Okay, perfect. Would you tell people that's your favorite restaurant? Would you recommend that restaurant to other people? No, well, I, I don't feel comfortable recommending anything. And then again, around 35% of the people will do it no matter what. No, yeah. Like, no matter what. So that leaves around 50% of the people that if you ask them intelligently and, and honestly, they will do it. But if you just say, hey, can you write me a review? Mm, it has to be why like hey you know were you really happy i'm glad you're so happy so i was wondering would you and this is the thing would you feel comfortable is a lot better word to use to ask someone than will you because if you feel comfortable say, oh i feel calm okay perfect would you do that for me they're gonna say yes and that's with any endorsement including your google page mm-hmm. the google page well, folks, uh, if you're watching this, if you would feel comfortable giving us a review or recommendation, we're going to be putting our google.com slash my business link in the comments below so right. that you can. Because yeah. uh, here's one of the things I did realize uh, with my business page, I had 73, I think, five star reviews because they changed it from reviews mm-hmm. to recommendations. And now uh, just the other day when I logged in, it said I had negative six recommendations which i don't even know how that's possible and so i need to people took back their recommend more people took back their recommendations than they put them in the first place it was you know they they keep on one thing about social media and facebook and it'll constantly change right i mean i had 70 mm-hmm. something because i was like okay yeah this is a great place to get and then then they changed it to recommendations and then they want people just to write I think some people, there's like a, a one out of five star and then they want them to write something and some people will just do, okay, five stars and not feel comfortable mm-hmm. writing something because they don't want, like you said, you know, maybe they feel like they can't write intelligently about or review somebody properly in that way. And so they just, they're, hey, I'm good with a five star, but it may be- And this is the other thing. That is like a net, like a net. You should, we, we talked about on Yelp, like you should be rating the businesses too. I get all the time Google, of course, follows everything that you do. So I'll get a, I'll get a Google alert saying, "Hey, it seems like you were recently at this place. You're getting a lot of your your reviews have ready for this. Your reviews have eighteen thousand views. Eighteen thousand views of my reviews. Could you rate this place? Like they like Google will reach out, and that is to me that's Google wait because then when Google sees oh Jeff's the same business." That's reviewing these places, and they're looking right. at eighteen, literally eighteen thousand views of my reviews, and it's like they wait. Oh, Jeff plays with the platform a lot. Jeff uses the platform a lot. Right. Let's push Jeff out. Yeah, they're going to reward the people that play with their toys. Mm-hmm. 
So that's what I'm saying about the G Suite and the Google Voice. Let's, what about Google Voice numbers? How do you feel about that? I think it's a great thing to use for advertising. I think Google Voice is a great thing to use for advertising. I think it's a great way of... Gives you like a gatekeeper. Like a -B yeah, it gives you a gatekeeper. And it's a great way of A-B testing things. So I may run an ad oh, good point. where I use this photo and this copy. And I'm like, you know what? We're going to do a just listed campaign. And I'm going to use this photo with this wording and this Google Voice number. And then I'm going to use this photo with this wording and this separate Google Voice number. Then I'm going to mail them out and say, ooh, this one actually gets more calls, more whatever. So I think it's a great way to A-B test things. Like, yeah. how do you know what you have works? I I like it, like I said, is like to keep keep it as a gatekeeper, especially like realtor safety. Um, yeah. You know, we had Dave Lagaz on last week talking about talking yeah, about that and how some agents, you know, their photos maybe aren't as appropriate as they should be, and they can be targeted, and they have their cell phone mm -hmm. number right on there, and and then mm -hmm. they tell people like, "I'm at an open house all alone, come see me." And is if you can have that Google Voice, because you could also text <coughs> it as well. So rather mm -hmm. than say text me to confirm, uh, we've also used it with our with our admin at times to confirm showings and that so again it's not they're not texting people with their own personal cell phone number they're texting them with this virtual number which they can yeah because you never know who the creepy people may be Jamie. right i mean jeffrey could be on the other side no you're on that side of me <laughs> you're on that side of me you got big big hands Okay, and we got the 107, folks. Do we got any other questions or a question? This is uh, we didn't get any questions. Sorry. I didn't. I no. Well, well you, you know, know I think it's also the day after the holiday. Yeah, and on the playback, you could always, too. if you're watching this on the playback, don't hesitate to type questions in the comments because we'll still be alerted, and then we could use those uh, in the next uh, Matt Mount San podcast. But, but, Mount San, <laughs> Mount San, M T S. What is M T S A N? Mount San. I I feel bad saying this. I thought you were having a stroke or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, can he? I'm like, is, is what's wrong with that speech pattern? Mount can you smile? Saying. Just want to make sure you smile, stick your tongue out left and right. That's how you can tell. Okay. That's a smile. Yeah. Smile actually is the acronym. If you think you're having a stroke, if you can smile. Don't ask me why I know that. So, Jamie, what else? We'll go for a couple more minutes if you have much to say about something. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm back on the road again next week. I'll be in Southern Maryland, and then I'll be in uh, Mississippi. Nesbitt, Mississippi, Northwest Mississippi Association of Realtors, also known as Tip of the Sip. Yeah. Right near Memphis. Tip of the Sip. I was supposed to be up in Canada at the end of the month for um, Realty Alliance. Canceled? Yeah, it got canceled. Yeah, it got canceled. I was looking so far away. So it was the training director, instructors, and recruiters for um, Realty Alliance, which is like the big yep. 70 brokers from across the, across the United States. And they asked me to go out there and do a presentation. And normally I wouldn't do stuff like this, but the woman butted me up. Did, did somebody cancel and they had nobody else to choose from or what? No, I actually was <laughs> was the first choice, and again, normally it's like, hey, like, like I don't, I don't do those types of things. And actually, yeah. those are the types of things I do. But she butted me up, and she goes, "We'd love to have the, the goat out here." And I'm like, "Oh, see, and you got to call me Brady's the goat." Tom Brady's going up there. Just, come on. <laughs> well, this, this, this because this, this is the thing. <laughs> this is the thing, as you know, even the same. There's very few people because I'm. I'm I'm SVP of training, so I'm, I'm the equivalent of a training director at, at a large board, but I'm not. I work for Element. So, you know, we have, I don't know, 7,500 agents. So there's very few people who are in the ed director field who are actually trainers. There's not a lot of people yeah, who, actually, who actually do that. And so for a lot of these is they want my unique take because mm -hmm. I understand it from the trainer aspect. I understand it from designing classes like you, and I understand it from – running the education department. So it's a little unique thing. And then where are we going next? Where are we going next month? Atlanta, Georgia. Is that next month? Atlanta, Georgia. Well, 
Yeah, Atlanta, yeah. Georgia we'll for the Real live. Estate Educators Association. So if you're watching this and you are an educator or maybe you're starting to do training in your office and you're, you're thinking that, hey, maybe I want to take the show on the road, so to speak. Uh, yep. Great, great place to get started. I think that's where Jeffrey and I did get a lot of training there as well as rap, the Rapid Summit in Wichita, Kansas. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about being a coach, a manager, a trainer, an instructor, um, or just you know, it could be an office manager at that because if you, usually office yep. managers should be good trainers as well. It helps you to be a better facilitator of meetings in that. So, Jim, this, this is a good thing. So maybe when we're down there at that time, the much to say about nothing, we talk like how to become a trainer, how to become that speaker, how to like how to get better if you're the office manager and you have to do meetings and those types of things. I think that could be a cool topic. I agree. The train goes by. Uh, you know, and, and really it could be an unfiltered truth about it because so often mm -hmm. people think it's this glamorous speaker life that I get picked up in a helicopter. <laughs> well, I goes, do now, but that's uh, different. You, yeah, you do. Um, and then I, I, you know, get chauffeured in a limo and then I have a rider that has green M&Ms and Evian water and all this other stuff. It's like, yo, man. Wait, have you, have you seen Tom Berry's rider? Is that what that is? <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Uh, Sorry, Tom. You, you know, I love you. Now, uh, for me, they're like, yes. I'm lucky if I get water. I'm like, could I get some water? They're like, what kind of water you want? We got tap. I'm like, okay. And it, it's warm even. <laughs> so uh, so, I, so I think that actually be cool since we'll actually be down there for a long weekend with a bunch of trainers and instructors. You know, um, I think that would actually be a cool conversation to have because, and again, I think the skills that, and again, I understand we're messing around a lot on this podcast. Like it's not a formalized training and that type of stuff. But I, right. I think the skills that we have as trainers, instructors, teachers, coaches can very easily take these skills and apply it. If you're a team leader, if you're an office manager, if you're the broker like this, this, I think it what makes us better at real estate in general is because yeah. we understand how to present. We understand how the flow of things, even though, this show really has no flow. I got super flow. You're the slow mo flow, mofo. <laughs> You're the what? slow mo flow, mofo. <laughs> uh, <Just> leave <laughs> well, uh, that brings us to our time, folks. Oh, I blocked the wrong side. Oh. <laughs> Put your head over, put, move your head over a little bit this way. Ah! <laughs> hey, let me pick your brain for a second. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. All right. So till next week. Perhaps uh, Tuesday. Uh, probably won't be. I think I'm on the road, but we'll figure it out. It'll probably. We yeah, I'll be in Maryland by that time. So I'll brought. We can do that from Maryland. I'll bring my green screen with me. Okay. I don't think I'm ready. All right. Cares. Once again, a you know a very ceremonious goodbye from Mister or Doctor Jeffrey Scott Stan. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero. J Man speaks. And I am Jeffrey Scott Stanton. He Thank stumbles on his own name, folks. But he's number one in your heart. No, you didn't see me. You didn't see me drop something as I was saying that. As my phone crashed to the floor, and I think broke. Well, you're not used to talking so fast. I understand. You're a slow-talking New Yorker. Slow-talking New Yorker. All right, everybody. See ya. Peace out.